Hi everyone, meet Kayla. She's a 16 year old girl who has been athletic her whole life. Kayla grew up loving sports and is now on the competitive volleyball team in her town. She headed over to her last work before their big tournament and ran into her friend Melanie. Hey Melanie, are you ready for tomorrow's big game? I'm so excited for the game tomorrow. I'm just fitting in one last workout before the game. I love coming to the gym. I just wish I didn't sweat so much. Too bad I can't wear antiperspirant like I used to. Why don't you wear antiperspirant anymore? I'm not sure if you heard on the news, but apparently people are saying that it might cause breast cancer. Wow, really? I had no idea. Thank you for giving me the heads up though. I wonder if it's true or just a silly news report. Kayla could not carry on without getting to the bottom of this. After all, it was something she used every day, as did many others. She went home to investigate and found out more information on the ingredients that are in antiperspirant. Here is some of the information she found. There are four main ingredients that may be of concern in deodorants and antiperspirants. First is parabens. These are chemical compounds used in cosmetics and food products that help to preserve their lifespan. Parabens can interfere with hormones, specifically estrogen regulation, which is why it can be linked to breast cancer. Aluminum is used as a thickening agent in body cosmetics, including antiperspirant. It is a chemical compound that can directly interfere with the gene regulation of certain cells that respond to estrogen, which can directly stimulate estrogen receptors even in the absence of the hormone. Triclosan is an antibacterial agent used in cosmetics, soaps, and detergents. It may be linked to unusual hormone activity and have negative effects on the human microbiome. Phthalates are chemical compounds used to increase the longevity of cosmetic products. However, they may be disruptive to androgen function. Androgens are hormones in the female body, mainly produced in the ovaries, which are later converted to estrogen. When these ingredients are applied in close proximity to breast tissue, they have the potential to misregulate estrogen, which can cause excessive cell proliferation, and therefore, breast cancer has become a concern with antiperspirant use. Even though Kayla had all this information, she still needed to find out more. She was curious. Do these actually enter the body, or do the ingredients sit on the surface of the skin? Is there any scientific proof that in populations that use antiperspirant, more people are diagnosed with breast cancer? With all these questions, she went back to her computer to look into some research studies to further her investigation. The first study that Kayla found was based out of Washington. The study focused on women ages 20 to 74, where 810 women were diagnosed with breast cancer and 793 women made up the control group and did not have breast cancer. To find correlations in this study, hair removal was a focus, as abrasions from razor nicks under the arm can allow for substance absorption into the blood flow and subsequently the tissue. All the women were interviewed based on three factors, their regular antiperspirant use, exclusivity of antiperspirant versus other underarm cosmetics, and whether they used it within one hour of shaving. There was no significant difference in any of the three factors between the control group of women when compared to the group of women with breast cancer, therefore suggesting no evidential link between breast cancer and antiperspirant use. The second study Kayla looked at was based in Iraq. The study focused on determining a link between antiperspirant use and breast cancer. The study consisted of 54 breast cancer patients and 50 controls. These individuals were interviewed and questioned on their age, family history of breast cancer, antiperspirant use, smoking status, and oral contraceptive use. The results of the study showed that there was a higher usage of antiperspirant use in the control group than the breast cancer patient group, representing no link between antiperspirant usage and breast cancer. However, when looking at family history, there was a higher percentage of people who were diagnosed with breast cancer and had a family history of breast cancer. Oral contraceptive use also had a higher correlation with breast cancer. Overall, a stronger link was associated between those who had developed breast cancer and those who had used oral contraceptives or had breast cancer in their family history. These studies were super informative, but we can't overlook some drawbacks they have. First, these studies may not adequately represent the entire population as the sample sizes and populations are limited. As well, neither of these studies looked at the cumulative effects of deodorant and antiperspirant use over time. 
With such a new concern in society, more research is definitely needed on prospective studies on the effects of antiperspirant in order to gain more conclusive findings, specifically for human use of these ingredients and products. The next day, Kayla went to her tournament and ran into Melanie. Melanie, I have some great news for you. I was researching about antiperspirants and their link to breast cancer. And I found out there is no direct link that shows that it causes an increase in the chances of developing breast cancer. Oh, that's great. I guess it's really important to do your own research before listening to exaggerated news in the media. For sure. I think it's safe to say that antiperspirant is safe to use during practice now, but I'll keep an eye out for any new findings. Let's have a great game. <laughs>